am Barbara Vasquez, Automation Sales Engineer at Arstyle, and I'm here to show you the first step in working with intrinsically safe fuel devices, proving that the circuit is really intrinsically safe. Intrinsically safe circuits contain a barrier or associated apparatus, a transmitter or fuel device, and a cable in between. The three of them together must form an intrinsically safe loop. For this video, we will assume that you have already selected an intrinsically safe transmitter rated for your specific hazardous location, gas group, and ambient temperature, and that you have an intrinsically safe barrier that can operate that transmitter. Every intrinsically safe loop must be verified by checking the entity parameters on both sides. These are voltage, current, and power which are known by different shorthands in the ATEX and NEC worlds. These parameters are the maximum energy a fuel device can handle in an intrinsically safe manner. In other words, the output values of the barrier must always be less than or equal to the input values of the fuel device. The next step is calculating energy storage. The relevant parameters here are internal capacitance and inductance of the fuel device, as well as the maximum external capacitance and inductance of the barrier, and the capacitance and inductance of the cable. The length of the cable is important here, so keep that in mind. In this case, the maximum capacitance and inductance of the barrier must be greater than or equal to ones of the fuel device and cable combined. Let's run an example you'll find the entity parameters in the operating manuals or control drawings. First, we'll check whether the fuel device values are really less than or equal to those at the barrier. It's looking good so far. Energy storage can be a bit more tricky. If inductance and capacitance at the fuel device are zero or less than 1% of those at the barrier, you can use the maximum inductance and capacitance values of your barrier for these calculations. In any other case, you will have to use the values for mixed or concentrated inductance and capacitance, which you will find in the documentation or control drawing of the barrier. Alternatively, use 50% of the barrier's maximum values in the calculations. You can get the cable values from the cable vendor, or you can use the standard values shown here. Now, we have got all the values to complete our verification of intrinsic safety. The inductance and capacitance of the fuel device plus the cable length are less or equal to those at the barrier. This table now proves that our example is in fact intrinsically safe. All you need to do now is to make a written or electronic record of this proof and you are done. Almost. You should always refer to the applicable local standards like this to make sure you are 100% compliant and 100% safe. And if you like a better recommendation or an expert to verify the intrinsic safety of your loops, just get in touch with our style. Because when it comes to safety, we're always here to help. Take care.